Good day, church family. Good to have you involved in our Bible study. We're finishing Lesson 11, Colossians 3. We'll focus on verses 15 through 17. And thank you for joining uh, today. We do want to also give out homework assignments uh, to be ready for our discussion on Wednesday evening at 7.30 following our 7 p.m. Zoom um, devotional uh, on YouTube, rather. So our assignment for Wednesday, we'll have a class discussion. It will follow in course and nature by last names. So if your last name begins with Q through Z, uh, question 11 from page 49, how does the peace of God rule in our hearts? We assign to you for discussion. Uh, question 12, what do we learn from verse 16 if applied? Would improve our singing today? And I like for those whose last name begins with an A through H, A through H, you have question 12 and then question 13. What is the point of verse 17? Those whose last name begins with I through P, I through P, we look for you to lead that discussion on question 13. Thank you all for your participation, your kind words, and the encouragement given as we spur to study together to grasp a full understanding of God's word and then to have that new man reside and maintain in our lives as we fight daily to keep the old man suppressed. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this humble devotion, this time together as a family to learn more about your word. We pray that it energizes us and rises our thinking to a higher plane of spirituality where our view of life is changed from the perspective of goodness and godliness, dear God, ruled by the Holy Spirit. We are reminded of what's going on in this world. However, dear God, we're pilgrims. We should be concerned, however, because souls are being lost. And at the same time, we are commissioned to save souls. So let us soberly look at this time that is at hand and let us use our time wisely, redeeming it, dear God, for your glory and honor. Bless us as we study, help us to gain insight, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit that directs and guides us. And we are especially thankful for Jesus Christ who laid his life on the line for us so that we may be your children. In his name we pray, amen. All right, Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 through 17, the Bible reads, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So Paul is finishing the character of the new man, and it's been a blessing walking through this together. And of course, the new man is something that is uh, it's a redesign. It's created in Christ Jesus to reflect him, to reflect God, and for that new man to be something that is seen and it's visible, and it rules our hearts and our minds through that thinking uh, guided by the Holy Spirit. So we walk through the qualities of the new man. We have a few qualities that we'll finish up today, if it be the Lord's will, and go over them together. And I want to share my screen, to kind of go over the PowerPoint to share that with you. And as we discuss uh, these elements here in verses 15 through 17, um, we, we thank God for, for his enlightenment as to the character of the new man and these finishing thoughts in verses 15 through 17. Please, of course, use the resources that we have provided. Uh, we are using the uh, BTP books um, and the study in Colossians. We're almost done with that, the book of Thessalonians. Uh, that study book should be at the building, and um, you are welcome to grab a copy when you go to worship at your design time, uh, 10 and 1130, according to the groups uh, that were uh, assigned by our elders. So we are finishing again uh, this lesson, and if it be the Lord's will, we'll go to lesson 12, uh, finishing this book of Colossians here. So. The new man qualities, the next quality that is mentioned here in verse 15 is peace, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. And so 
peace that Paul is reminding them of is a peace by which exhibits quietness and rest and oneness, peace. Um, so that peace can only be given by God. And we know that from John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus says, the peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled. And do not be afraid. And this peace is the only peace that God gives us that can lead to that oneness, that quietness, that rest. The peace the world gives is circumstantial, basically. It's when you feel good, then that peace is there. Or when things are going your way and there's no disruption in life, that peace is there. That's not the peace Jesus is talking about here. He is talking about a such peace that rules as it settles any dispute and conflict, it rules, it's the umpiring force. And we look that up, the word rule, um, the, it is to act as an umpire. We look that up in the Greek and do a word study. It is to rule that it is the final judgment in your situation, in your circumstances, in your outlook. It is the ruling power that guides one into a state of quietness and rest in any situation, even when there's conflict and there are challenges in life, that peace rules. It isn't circumstantial or it isn't guided by the atmosphere in a sense. It's guided by a spiritual understanding of what God places in the hearts of his believers. So when panic or when unsettledness comes, the ruling peace, the umpiring force is something that is spiritual, not physical, that gives the believer a calm. Now, the new man exhibits that, and that new man understands it guides and it sustains him or her as they walk faithfully in Christ. So if that peace isn't obtained in your life, it is something by which can be as you mature in your faith by putting on the new man and suppressing the old man. The old man looks at its circumstances or her circumstances and surroundings and let that dictate the peace that he or she may have in life. But the new man doesn't see it that way. The new man sees it greater than something that is circumstantial or physical or tangible, but sees it as a spiritual element, a gift given by God to sustain him or her while they walk faithfully in this world. We certainly know this scriptures are well quoted scripture, Philippians 4, 7, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That is the umpire that guides that heart and sustains the faithful in any and all circumstances this life may bring about. So the new man understands that and it is in a peaceful state, even at peace with those within the body because it says here, to which you also were called in one body and be thankful. So one body, of course, one church, church and body is synonymous. We went over those scriptures and Paul also clarifies that in chapter one and also in the book of Ephesians. So church and body is, is the same thing. And as Paul says in Ephesians four, there is one body as well as he's saying it here, there is one body, one body, one church. So with that peace, there is another element that goes along with the qualities of the new man, and that is thankfulness. When you look that word up, I like Merriman Webster's Dictionary. It gives three meanings, but they're all synonymous, I think, in what thankfulness is. Thankfulness is simply conscious of a benefit received. So it is something that is externally given and provided and the recipient understands what's being given and is the conscientious understanding of receiving something that benefits them. And with that, there is an expression of thanks or an expression of gratitude. Thankfulness and gratitude are synonymous, they are the same. So a thankful heart expresses the thanksgiving 
in form of gratitude when they understand what has been given and with that they're well pleased by what is given and they show contentment and we know contentment as the bible says in first timothy 6 6 now godliness with contentment is great gain first thessalonians 5 18 says in everything give thanks for this is the will of god in christ jesus for you the new man puts on a heart of thanksgiving peace rules the heart and the heart is expressive in thanksgiving for every and all blessings of life we're in a state where we can be thankful even right now amongst the things that are happening in this world we still have a lot to be thankful for and the new man sees the goodness and is able to center his or her heart with a heart of thanksgiving and gratitude that's what the new man does and it's expressive it's shown it's something that one can visibly see that thankful heart because the new man resides and it doesn't complain like the old man would the new man sees the blessing but the old man sees the negative things that are going on whereas the new man sees the positive and and sees the blessings of god and are thankful for that so the new man puts on a heart of thank thankfulness and has thanksgiving in their heart other qualities that are expressed in the next verse the bible says and let the peace of god rule in your hearts to which also you were called in one body and be thankful verse 16 let the word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom the next characteristic of the new man is the indwelling of the word so indwelling means there's an inner activating or guiding force that's stationary in the heart of the believer the indwelling word is stationary it's a guiding force it rules directs and it pushes forward the position of the mind of the new man by which actions follow and as the bible says let it dwell in you richly when you look that word richly it means abundant existing in large amount amply supplied overflowing great plenty so the word of god should reside in the new man richly and it's stationary it sustains position and activates the direction of the new man by which is shown in wisdom and i like this scripture here where paul remarks of timothy's grandmother and mother in second timothy 1 15 he says for i am mindful of the sincere faith within you which first dwelt in your grandmother lois and your mother eunice and i am sure that it is in you as well this was an indwelling of an abundant supply of god's word exhibited shown displayed by wisdom of timothy's grandmother as well as his mother and paul was confident it resided in timothy as well the new man is a repository of god's word by which he or she handles it appropriately in their lives as james states in james chapter 3 13 if you are wise and understand god's word ways prove it by living an honorable life it james 13 states the exhibition of wisdom is shown by good works in the conduct of meekness through wisdom so the indwelling word of god is in the believer and it dwells with them richly they do not have a superficial knowledge they obtain wisdom and they show it through the understanding and skillful living of one's life so it is one thing to know the word of god and to be able to recite and even go to scriptures and another thing to understand it and to apply it in everyday situations 
Matter of fact, it's absolutely important that we use God's word, but to understand God's word, because our worldview is affected by what we know about God's word. And in a time like this, where there's a lot of rhetoric, a lot of things that are going on now, and as a, as a result, there are a lot of positioning of thoughts, stances, and teachings, when I mean teachings, concepts and philosophies that are out there that are worldly. And as a result of that, if we do not have God's word dwelling in us richly and understand it, our worldview would be a worldview based off of earthly thinking instead of biblical thinking. And that's very important. We should see the uh, uh, through the eyes of the Bible to establish a Christian worldview about everything that tr that we traverse in this life. So it's very important that the new man understands that and takes time to put in the work, as Paul uh, was reminding uh, Timothy, study to show thyself a proof unto God, approved unto God, a workman needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. And it's something that we have to devote our time in studying, but most importantly, and all by getting, get an understanding so that our worldview and our, and our perception of life as we live here is based on a biblical worldview and not an earthly worldview using earthly wisdom. Now, the next quality here about the new man, as the Bible continues to uh, stay in verse 16, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Now, this used to be a favorite scripture to refer as to our acts of worship. And I've used that, this scripture many times. Uh, uh, along with Ephesians 5, uh, 19, and, and other scriptures regarding a cappella singing. And as you be studied this in terms of the new man, Paul is talking to those in the body. He's not talking to anyone outside of the body, is that the new man sings properly. And there are reasons that Paul gives in this scripture that the book does very well in bringing that out. He gives these reasons that singing should be done with the proper mindset. One, the mindset is to edify one another, as the Bible says, teaching and admonishing one another. Singing is a form of teaching. So the new man understands the reason why he or she sings is to help in the teaching and admonishing one another. Teaching and admonishing one another is for all. It's not just designed for a few people. It is for all who participates in worship to teach and by singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So the new man understands that. And the new man understands as the Bible says, a heart of gratitude is in the mind as he or she sings. And as the Bible says here, with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So when one sings, not only is he edifying one another, but he's expressing or she's expressing gratitude with sincerity and conscientious understanding of God's blessings as he or she sings and understands that the singing is to the Lord as an act of worship in the fulfillment of the command. Now, with that being said, it doesn't necessarily have to mean that you sing well in terms of my sound, but it necessarily facilitates the heart of the new man as the new man sings to edify, sings to express gratitude, 
in thankfulness of God's blessing and sings to honor and worship God. So when we come together, it is incumbent upon all of us who, who have been redesigned through Jesus Christ, through obeying the gospel, that we let that new man sing and that we don't sing because, oh man, we got to sing. We got to sing two songs and then we're going to have a prayer. Then we sing another song and we're going to have communion. No, use this to exemplify the new man that should be residing in all of us who obey the gospel. To edify, to express gratitude and thanksgiving, and to honor God in our worship. Now, certainly this is the new man that is, 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 is recreating our mindset, and the new man is also controlling the things that we do in life. So understand the new man can worship God properly, unlike the old man. The old man's worship is unacceptable. And a couple of reminders, one of the scriptures that we've talked about, about the new man and why the new man cannot properly worship God and how God sees that, that old man, if that old man is residing in the heart of the one that is a believer, but not, but not yet been recreated. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.22 that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. The old man is not about anything spiritual. He or she is all about earthly carnal things, and that cannot come before God to worship him acceptably. The Bible further says in Proverbs 28, 9, one who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. The old man that is residing and remaining in one cannot even pray. And anything he or she does, God turns his ear away from them as it's stated in Isaiah 59 2. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. The old man that grows corrupt according to deceitful lust separates him or herself from God, where God does not look to even position his ear towards hearing or accepting anything that he or she presents. And as John 9.31 states, now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. The new man is all about worshiping God in a way because he or she lives a life that's acceptable to him and growing and maturing in the faith. He didn't say he lives a perfect life, but is growing and maturing in the faith as he or she subdues the old man and is wearing and keeping on the new man. And that's a wonderful thing because Paul even stated it himself that he had not obtained, but he was pressing forward to the higher calling by which we should. We should be renewing every day through the word of God and understanding and applying and suppressing the old man and letting the new man resurrect. So when we come together to worship, we have to remember what state we're in. Is the new man residing in us? Are we walking accordingly based off the qualities of the new man? And that's the predominantly the way that I position my outlook in life, or it's the old man. If it's the old man, the old man cannot acceptably worship God in spirit and in truth. And I just want to say John 9, 31, as, as well as the rest of these scriptures here, are not positioned to anyone outside uh, of, of, of God's realm of the body here, John. These are to those who were in a covenant relationship with God. And so, um, you know, we've used John 9, 31 in, in a way of teaching those that were outside the body of Christ. But here, he is absolutely 
addressing this to those who are in the body of Christ. He was addressing John uh, to the Jewish nation in Isaiah 59 too. These had a covenant relationship with God, as well as this being addressed in Ephesians 4:22, which those members are in the member of God's church, the Lord's church, as well as Colossians that's stated here. So we must take these scriptures accordingly and apply them correctly as to God's message to us, those that are in the body. All right, the last quality that I want to talk about um, is lordship. The new man understands his lordship. And here, the new man is stated in verse 17. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The new man understands the authority in his or her life and balances that out and uses it as a buffer to say, what would Jesus do as that? phrase was commonly used back in the 90s and early 2000s. He understands or she understands the authority of the shepherd, as John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. This is very important because sometimes we hear our own voice. And if that own voice is contradictory to what the word of God states, the new man understands the lordship is not him or her, but it is Christ Jesus and buffer or discipline his or herself to hear those words and let those words dictate the rule as the authority in their lives. So the new man created in Christ Jesus puts on these qualities, they're visible and they're something by which one matures through the renewing of the mind, through study, through prayer, through the Holy Spirit directing and guiding to become a new creation, a new creature in Christ Jesus as we are conformed in his image. And we thank God for that. I pray that every day we see God's image in our lives and each other when we come together, we are singing with grace in our hearts and we're singing to edify and to to show the glory of God and his rule in our lives and that we are walking together with peace rule in our hearts as the umpire of our life and that we are living a life of thanksgiving and honoring our Lord because he is our Lord. He is the authority in our lives and we bless his name as a result of that. We thank you for your time and attention and God, we're looking forward to worshiping you, with you in spirit and in truth on this upcoming Lord's Day. Thank you, and let's go to God in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for this study again. Bless our hearts and our minds to be, Father God, the new men and women that you've created in Christ Jesus for us to put on and to keep on. It is in your blessed Son's name we pray. Amen.